Hey, welcome back to Mobility One. We are lucky today. I have with me one of the strong girls, I'm not going to lie, I have San Francisco CrossFit. They're like a gang, like a cabal, let's be honest. Kristen Newman, super jock. Now, Kristen just had a little shoulder scope yesterday. And what they did was they went in and cleaned off a bone spur that's probably been there for, since before NOM, would you say? Probably. Probably. Now, you, you played some judo. Judo, weightlifting, capoeira. What a little else? bit of everything. Um, some rock climbing, some static trapeze, ballet. Oh, that's all. Yeah. Okay, so what you're seeing is that we have a lot of hard riding on these shoulders, and after a while, we optimize her positions the best we can, and it turns out she's got a little spot that makes her shoulders angry at her. Now, you uh, just competed at the American Open, didn't you? Yes. In spite of this little stuff, right? Yes. What did you do to modify that? Power snatched. Excellent. And were you dying with power snatched? I stop at weights before I start dying. And you know that, yeah. right? So, and you went five for six, is that true diet? Technically, we thought of six for six, but really yeah. it's five for six. So, a lot of function on top of that. And one of the things that told us about her shoulders, because she was able to train a lot and still kind of get ready, told us about sort of that intactness of her shoulder, right? I think that's a nice diagnostic, is that these things, if she can lengthen from both sides and stabilize, which she could, it was a good diagnostic about the shoulder. That's why we felt okay about you doing magic. So first thing we're going to do today is I just want to talk about, first piece first, is she's got a whole protocol for, she's following with her physician. We're not violating that protocol. Do what your physician says. Look at me. Physician cares about you. But we do want to make sure that you're not messing it up because the time between you go seeing the physician and post-surgery sometimes is a, is a little while, right? When's your next schedule? I actually see him tomorrow morning. Okay, perfect. So right, and that'll be the first time, and then it might mm -hmm. be two weeks after that. Probably. So what we want to do is make sure that... Um, she's got her elbow in the right place in the sling. And this is a big deal because we see people rock on the sling wrong all the time. Now, Kristen doesn't have any necessary range of motion requirements, issues. She just needs to let this thing heal up. So what we've done is we've placed her elbow to the back of the sling where it belongs. Now think about what we're doing a lot of times. When we park our hands here, we're able to stabilize. That lets the external rotation take effect. We take a lot of load off these anterior structures. Right? So imagine that that sling is just going to support that joint so we can let everything chill out and not freak out, which means that we want the hand kind of roughly in this position. If it was almost like on top of her body armor, this would be a fantastic position. So elbow goes to the back of the sling. This is also going to allow her to get her shoulders into a better position. She'll show me a little bit better position. There it is. And that makes a big difference because if she's programming herself to walk around and get stiff in a less than optimal position, that's what we're going to get afterwards, and, and we're going to have to undeal that. So we don't ever want a, after surgeries for an athlete to end up in a worse position. So if she comes around, she can hook this thing, runs it through, this little Velcro. A couple concepts that be aware of. Do you right now have a strap on your neck yeah. for the first time in a long time? Mm -hmm. Right, so one of the things is that she is going to get tight up here on the neck. We'll see where that ties in. Way back there. there go. So... She may need to knot this to get it tight enough because the Velcro is not intuitively obvious where that goes. And if she doesn't have it on tight enough, it will drop down. I want the elbow back in the sling, hand in a position where the elbow is being supported. And now she, doesn't that just feel different in your shoulder? Feels better. Uh, feels better. That's the goal. So try to let that joint get some breathing room and take all the pressure off the tissues. It's like having a big scabby wound like you scraped your knee inside there and we need to let the surgical time heal. You don't win any points. You can optimize your physiology, but you can't outrace your physiology. So at the bottom line is we want to give her an option that one, keeps her in a comfortable position so we don't have to undeal with the spasm or deal with tight neck. Two, protects her and puts the joint into its best kind of congruency position. So what if you had someone just support your elbow a little bit, you're like, oh, it feels amazing. She doesn't have a big block here because we're not worried about her going too far, but we just want to support the joint a little bit. So she can now optimize that position, go ahead and optimize the strap where you think you would want it. And that means you might have to fiddle with it a little bit. Does that make sense? Right. And that feels very different than when you had it in below. Correct. Which would add what? An internal rotation load, stressing mm -hmm. these tissues, anterior delta is tight all the time. Mm -hmm. So elbow to the back of the sling, placing that hand in a place. Now, if you keep your elbow in this position all day, what happens? It's tight. It gets really tight. Now, if we look at Kristen's hand, too, it is swollen like sausage finger. <laughs> now, do they give you a ball to squeeze? No, I bought my own. Got her, bought her own. This is not to strengthen or bridge the gap in between this. This is about clearing out the swelling in her arm. This arm has got to be dependent. Are you, are you in a hurry to put this over your head? 
No. No, that scares you a little bit right <laughs> yeah. now, right? Yeah. And you're the strongest girl I know. <laughs> so here's the deal. Strongest girl I know, afraid to put her arm over her head. Right. Your body's going to protect her, but we've got to deal with the swelling, especially if the hand is dependent, and then she's not using it all day. So I want her obsessively moving fingers and squeezing that ball as much as she can. If you're unsure about this, talk to your physician, absolutely. But our job for her is to clear up as much of the swelling as she can. Because you came in rocking a compression band or yes. compression sleeve. Where's yes. that? Where did it go? You can take it, take that off. Put... Right. So we've got a two times your compression sleeve, which you probably had lying around the house anyway, yeah? Of course. Naturally. Of course. We had to get her one. But uh, the bottom line is, let's advance as much compression. Now, the mechanism for clearing all the swelling is this lymphatic system. And so it's the muscle contraction that's going to clear these one-way valves and dump all of the swelling. It's not just going to clear itself. And what happens if she gets congested and this tissue remains congested, we get poor garbage out grocery in phenomenon. And in the tissues, especially in these insertion pieces, they, even though they didn't have to cut through muscles, they still went through all the soft tissue. That tissue will not knit down. We deal with the swelling. In the first 24, 48 hours, our job is swelling like it's your, like it's your life, right? Mm -hmm. This is, you're going to PR on swelling management. But as long as that swelling is in the joint or in the tissues, those tissues are not going to knit. So we take that swelling very seriously. Did you uh, power much mint Milano's? Yeah. Okay, so, which is <laughs> <just> fine, <laughs> comma, it's about controlling inflammation. One of the ideas here is that we want her to control as many things as she can control, because right now you sort of feel out of control. All these things are happening to you as an athlete, so we want you to control your nutrition. I know you're drinking a ton of water. Of course. Yeah. How'd you sleep? Actually, I slept okay. Great. Follow the advice of a doctor with pain meds. Mm -hmm. Follow the advice of a doctor with sleep and all these things. This is what your physician is masters at. They're really good at this stuff. Our job is to go ahead and create an environment where the physician's work can really take and that we can kind of optimize what we're thinking. Are you afraid of exercising? Could you use this other hand? I could use the other hand. I can use my legs. That's right. Use your legs. Other hand. Have you done an exercise? Have you gone for a walk? Uh, yes. Yes. That makes a difference. Last night I'm, I walked around the mall. <laughs> <laughs> there, you, there you go. Elite wall walking. The idea is do what you can, mm -hmm. wear with what you have. She's rocking this compression a ton. And if we get her into a compression shirt, eventually we'll compress the whole system. But do what you can do right now, right? right. Um, if she can lay on her back and even support that. How did you sleep last night? We talked about that. I was in like a recliner with um, a pillow under my arm, so it was up a little bit. At least ah. when I went to sleep, it was there. And the idea, again, of course, is to support the shoulder, mm -hmm. to allow it to set in the back of the socket. We hear a lot of people who complain after surgery after sitting in these bad, awkward positions. So mm -hmm. nonstop, futzing with the hand, squeezing something, and uh, we'll keep talking about the other pieces. See you guys tomorrow.